I was informed by a close friend that my wife of 21 years had been cheating on me. My buddy, Bruce, called me at work and told me that he had just seen my wife, Libby, walking hand in hand with another man towards a cheap hotel on the outskirts of our town. He said he took some pictures on his phone. Of course, I didn't believe it at first, I figured there had to be a logical explanation for her going to a hotel room with another man in the middle of the day when she was supposed to be working. By the way, my name is TJ. I asked Bruce to send me the pictures right away. I sat stunned, there was no mistaking that the pictures were of my wife, Libby. In the evening, I asked her how her day had gone, asking if she had gone out to dinner. To my surprise, she lied and said she ate at her desk. I threw her a surprised look and asked her again, are you sure you didn't leave for lunch? Libby's response shocked me even more. No, what are you saying? I'm lying? There was anger in her voice, not a trace of guilt. The pictures, along with her lies, really didn't prove anything. I did what every man who thinks his wife is cheating on him does, I turned to a private investigator. It turned out differently than I expected. Instead of a dingy, smoke-filled office with an old disgraced cop, I was ushered into a bright, modern office with two nerdy young men. They impressed me with their technical savvy and their understanding of how to get into places ordinary people can't. While they were impressive, they didn't come cheap, not cheap, but very effective. Two weeks later, I was back in their office. A folder was placed on my desk containing a full report with photos and videos. It detailed my wife's affairs with two different men, one with a salesman at her job and the other with a mechanic she met while fixing her car. The salesman, Dan Calhoun, she dated for over a year, and the mechanic, Henry Chambers, for only a few months. With evidence in hand, my next stop was the divorce attorney. If it had been a one-time thing, I might have been able to forgive her, but cheating on me for over a year was too much. The report had several transcripts of her liaisons with the salesman that indicated he was not her first lover. It was also clear from these transcripts that Libby liked her current situation and wanted it to continue. She liked the security and stability of life that I provided for her, but she also liked sleeping with men. She worked, but it was my business that provided our good lifestyle. Our son and daughter attended Big Ten colleges because of the money I was making. My visit to a divorce attorney was enlightening, to say the least. I quickly realized that divorce laws are not interested in the person who cheats, they are set up for the person to be screwed over in every way possible. Yes, this is just my editorial, but the attorney agreed with it. I left the attorney's office angry and depressed. The next problem shouldn't have been a problem, but given my wife's actions, I was depressed about this one as well. I had a meeting with my business's accountant, Jerry. Jerry had to explain the great success my business was expecting. We had three new accounts that were going to push the value of the business above 10 million. Jerry stopped halfway through, I don't understand. I'm telling you that all your hard work has finally paid off making you a rich man, and you look like you're going to kick my ass. I swallowed hard and told Jerry my sad story of how Libby cheated on me and how the lawyer told me that not only would she get half of everything, but I would probably have to liquidate the company to pay her off. That's not counting the monthly alimony she would receive to continue having her lovers. The only saving grace was that the kids were out of the house. Oh, the house. She would get that too. Jerry gave me his condolences and suggested we postpone our meeting until I had recovered. Jerry packed up his things and went back to his office. My afternoon at the office went completely unproductive until late afternoon, when Jerry called. TJ, could you stop by my office on your way home? I have an idea. Anything to delay my meeting with Libby was preferable. Jerry led me into his office and closed the door. I need to ask you a few questions first. You've always told me that Libby has little interest in your business, is that still true? I nodded, not sure what he was getting at. Then I can assume she has no idea that the value of your company is about to skyrocket? That's right. I've never talked business with her, and we've hardly spoken lately either. What's your point? Jerry held up his hand. Bear with me. I'm almost there. One last thing, 
She doesn't know that you know she's cheating on you, does she? That's right. I haven't confronted her or said a word. Okay, divorce is your solution. Weren't you listening? The lawyer said I would be raped in a divorce. No, you will be raped if you face her and divorce her. You divorce her and force her to agree to your terms. How the hell am I going to do that? Blackmail her with pictures and videos. With that kind of money at stake, she won't care. You're thinking about it wrong. She'll agree because she won't know what's really going on. Have you ever heard of a tax divorce? I looked at him, shaking my head in confusion. There was a thing a few years ago where couples would get divorced at the end of the year to pay their taxes. There was an influx of these tax divorces in December for couples where both worked, but one earned significantly more than the other. This could have helped some couples save enough money to take an expensive trip, where they would remarry. The government has closed most of those loopholes, but I'll bet your wife doesn't know much about tax law. I don't know, Jerry. Several times in the transcript she says she doesn't want a divorce. She just wants to have men on the side. She likes the life I provide for her. She's even talked about quitting her job to have more time for fun. That's even better. We use her greed against her. You'll tell her that your business is going to expand, but there will be significant tax implications. You'll tell her that you may have to make a few more trips out of town, but she'll be able to leave her job for a while. She'll realize that this is the best of all worlds for her, more time to have fun and more money. Tell her I've offered a tax-free divorce and the compensation is a trip to Hawaii to remarry, and a lot more money. Is that legal? I asked. Of course, it's legal. We'll draw up the papers on fair terms, but you get to keep your business and pay no alimony. Let me get started on the project. I'll contact you in a couple of days. It'll work. I promise. You have to keep it a secret that you know about her cheating. We don't want her to get suspicious about your motives. This is probably the hardest part, I thought to myself. It was hard not to show my contempt for Libby. I almost lost my temper when she told me she had to work late on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The private investigator's report indicated that she was sleeping with the mechanic on Tuesdays and the salesman on Thursdays. I was a little sarcastic but kept my cool. A week later, Jerry had all the paperwork ready. He gave me a report to give to Libby that indicated how much we would save. It also included the details we would have to fulfill to save money, such as putting the house in Libby's name only. I was glad that it was Wednesday, I didn't think I'd be able to hold my temper if I found out she'd just been by one of her boyfriends. I was sitting at the kitchen table with three folders on the table when she walked in. Honey, we need to talk. I knew those words would get her attention. The pale, shocked look on her face told me I was right. Libby eyed the folders apprehensively. Is something wrong? She asked in a trembling voice. I picked up the first folder and opened it. No, it's good, but I want you to hear me out before you say anything. My company's business is going well, but it's about to get even better. You know I've been able to provide well for our family, but I've always had to put most of the profits back into the business. Now we are on the verge of making it all pay off. The problem is the tax deductions. Along with my accountant, he found a way for us to save about $50,000. Libby's eyes lit up. $50,000? We won't have to do anything illegal, will we? No, he said, it's perfectly legal, and lots of people do it. Okay, TJ, stop dancing around it. What are you talking about? I pulled out a second folder. It's called a tax divorce. Libby gasped. Just hear me out. A lot of people do this. It fixes the marriage penalty. In our case, the new income will bring a big penalty. Jerry said a lot of his clients get divorced in December and then use the money they save to go on an exotic vacation in January to get married again. They've changed some rules that say you have to stay divorced for six months or it's fraud. Jerry added this just in case Libby typed tax divorce into Google because it was a new government condition. 
Libby had a shocked look on her face. We had to start dealing with the aftermath. We would only be divorced on paper, Jerry said. We might have to stay divorced for the whole year to get a tax break for the second year, which could be substantial. I would have to work a few more hours and take a few more trips, but it would pay off for the company and for us. You may even be able to quit your job. There are a few details we'll have to work out. I could see the wheels turning in her head. I knew exactly what she was thinking, more money and more time to sleep with her boyfriends. What are the details actually? We're supposed to be getting a divorce. I picked up the third folder. We'll have to divide our assets. I quickly deed the house to you, and then we split our bank accounts. I'll transfer all utilities into your name, but the payments will go into my account. Nothing will change, but we'll have more money. Libby started to speak with a strange expression on her face, but I quickly stopped her by jabbing my finger in her direction. Look, I know how much our marriage means to you. We don't have to do this. We can just pay the extra taxes. At that moment, I realized I had her in my grasp. No, I think that's a good idea. I don't like the thought of us getting divorced, but if it's just on paper, it'll be worth it. I struggled to suppress a smirk. I don't want to rush you into this decision, but Jerry said we have to act fast to make it work. We have to sign the petition and those permits, and he'll do the rest. Jerry said she needed to read everything before she signed. I have a trip that starts this Friday and will last through the weekend. I knew this would be a deal breaker for my loving, cheating wife. Libby picked up the petition folder. I think this is a good idea. I'll read it and sign it so you can have your accountant come in. Libby signed the papers before I went on the trip I told her about. It wasn't a business trip, but I needed time to set things up and see if she had fallen in love with her boyfriends. I had installed hidden cameras in the house to record her actions. True to her mechanic nature, she was sleeping with her on my bed within an hour of my departure. The divorce went as planned, and not much changed in our lives, except for the complete cessation of our sex life. Libby asked about it a couple of times, but I always blamed it on stress from work and new bills. She didn't push for it since she was getting everything she needed from her two boyfriends. I watched Libby and her actions in our bedroom, not that I wanted to see her having sex with other men. I had already developed an immunity to that. I needed to know if she had figured out my plan. The divorce became final when the judge signed the decree a week after we filed it, but there were restrictions on when it could be changed and why. Jerry said we had to wait 180 days before doing anything permanent. As we approached the 180-day divorce deadline, I wanted out. I sat down at the table with Jerry to determine the best exit plan. Yes, I wanted out, but I wanted to humiliate her along the way. I wanted her infidelity exposed in the most public way possible. Look, TJ, if you reveal that you knew about her infidelity before the divorce, she can convince the judge that the tax divorce was just a sham to keep your money from her, Jerry said. But she's the one who cheated. Shouldn't she be punished? You don't want to risk it, do you? That would be easy. Catch her in bed with any of her lovers and move out. Take some pictures so she can't deny it on that basis alone. You'll say you're done with her, and you just won't remarry. I jumped up. And she gets away with cheating on me? I wouldn't call it getting away with it. She's lost all interest in your company. You don't have to pay alimony, and most importantly, you're free of her. No, there has to be a way to burn her without jeopardizing the tax divorce. Jerry held up his hand. Wait, you have plenty of videos of her having fun after the divorce, right? I nodded. Use that to publicly announce that you're not getting remarried. Shut down the house's communications and stop her cash flow. Drop a bomb on her lovers and their wives and just sit back and watch the fireworks. I can say I discovered her cheating after the divorce and still set her on fire. TJ, now would be a good time to undercut her. We have the first of three big contracts coming up. You're going to be very rich. I say we find a place to live and then move out. 
leave her hanging for a week or so, then drop her a bomb. You need to decide if you're going to let your children know what's going on. They are the hardest part of the equation. When they find out about her deception, I think they'll be on my side. She constantly preached to them about honesty and loyalty while they were growing up. She made a big deal to our daughter by ratting her out to her then-boyfriend for going to a concert with another boy. As Libby told her, dishonesty in a relationship means the death of that relationship. Jerry grinned. Gosh, what a hypocrite. I think you're right. Your daughter will hate her when she finds out. One last thing, you know you don't have to do anything to break things off with Libby. It's already done. You're not married, and the court order is final. Stop paying her bills for a house you don't own and be done with it. I finished my meeting with Jerry, intending to proceed with my divorce from Libby. I was already looking for a place to live, and I had a nice apartment just waiting for me to pull the trigger. In a week, I was ready to move out of my former home. It was important for me to meet both of my children before the bomb hit the ground. Both were living on their college campuses, taking summer classes. My son, Derek, was quick to take my side. He was very angry at what his mother was doing and had done but agreed not to say anything to her until I moved out. Jennifer, my daughter, was not so quickly convinced. Her problem was that she couldn't believe her mother was capable of such a thing. She didn't believe her mother could cheat on me, given all her sermons about honesty and fidelity. I hated to do it, but I came prepared. I showed my daughter ample evidence to prove her mother's deception. When she saw the videotapes, she became very angry. Jennifer wanted to confront her mother herself. All I had to do was convince her to keep quiet until I moved out of the house. Once I got back to town, the news was very good. The second contract was ready, and I signed the lease for my new apartment. The furniture would be delivered in two days. In two days, I would start dropping bombs. The first order of business was to move out of the house while Libby was at work. I accomplished this task easily enough with the help of a rented truck and a few buddies. I took everything I wanted out of the house. I didn't take any furniture, just my belongings, toys, tools, and clothes. I put away the cameras I had set up around the house. Libby had gotten so used to my absence that she didn't notice me being gone for a few days. It was the second part of my plan that made her notice that my stuff was gone. The second part of my plan was to blow up her lovers. The wives of the mechanic and the salesman had received untraceable emails with video files of their husbands sleeping with Libby. I felt sorry for what these families would suffer, but I wasn't the one who started this. I would end it. 30 minutes after I sent the emails to the wives, Libby called, leaving a message for me to call her. She assumed I was still out of town. In the evening, the calls became even more frantic. She realized that my clothes and other belongings were missing. I continued to ignore her calls and texts. Both of my children called to say that their mother had called in a panic, wanting to know if they had heard from me. Both covered for me, saying they hadn't spoken to me in a while. They each tried to get her to tell them what was going on, but she wouldn't give any information. She wouldn't even tell them why she was looking for me. I let her wait another two days with no communication. Even though it was Thursday, I figured she would be home alone after I dropped bombs on two of her lovers. My God, TJ, what are you doing knocking on the door of your own house, and where have you been? I've been calling you for days. No, Libby, this is your house. After our divorce, you have every right to it. Can I come in? Yes, of course. Come in. What is this nonsense you speak of? We need to talk about when we're going to get married again. I'm tired of this whole fake divorce game. Okay, that's what I want to talk about too. Our divorce is quite real and quite legal, and you seem to be taking full advantage of it. There was fear in Libby's eyes, but she was indignant. What does that mean? I told you I'm done with this nonsense and ready to renew our vows. I couldn't help myself and burst into laughter. Stop laughing. Where did all your stuff go? Oh, you noticed. 
I moved out. I got tired of sleeping in the bed you have your lovers in. Libby sighed. Please, like you said, let's stop these games. I know you sleep with two different men on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and when I'm out of town. I don't think we're legally married, so technically you're not cheating on me, but as a result of your activities, I've reconsidered my decision to renew our marriage vows. I think we're better off staying divorced. That's why I moved out. Shock and anger filled Libby's face. What? No, that's not the way it works. We're married, and this tax divorce thing was a sham. I'm going to court. We're married, for crying out loud. Again, no, it's perfectly legal. You signed it in front of a judge. I suppose you could claim you committed fraud on the court, but that would be a felony. I won't support you if you admit to the crime. To hell with that. I know what you're up to. Somehow you found out about me and Dan, and came up with this whole tax divorce scheme to cheat me out of my stake in your company. Well, that's not going to work. My god, Libby, are you telling me you cheated on me while we were married? You know very well that you cheated. I know it was you who told their wives. I hope you're happy. You ruined two marriages with your little anonymous letters. Both of them have been kicked out of the house and are facing very difficult divorces. Both of them. Oh, my god, there are two of them. You cheated on me with two men. Anyway, our divorce is legal. You can spend all the money you have to try to get it annulled, but I think you're wasting your money. You might want to think about what you are going to tell our children about your cheating. I think they are very disappointed in you. You son of a, you told them, didn't you? Why the hell would you do that? Yeah, I don't know what you're so upset about. I should have told them why we weren't getting remarried. Cut the crap. We are married, and I intend to stay that way. It's over with Dan and Tim. It didn't mean anything. I love you. I know I've made some mistakes, but I want to do everything in my power to be the best wife I can be. Libby, that's wonderful. I'm so glad you realize what you did was wrong. Your next husband will benefit from your experience. By the way, I haven't told your parents yet. I'll let you tell them, unless you want me to do it too. My mom was shocked. She couldn't believe you were such a... I had to show her some tamer videos to make her believe me. She wanted me to tell you that you wouldn't be invited to Thanksgiving or Christmas or anywhere. She said she'd punch you in the face if she ever saw you again. Libby babbled on about me leaving our marriage and begged me to give her another chance. I left the house, and she was crying and cursing at me at the same time. Libby tried to get the divorce decree reversed, but when that failed, she filed a lawsuit to modify the terms of the divorce. It was comical to watch her argue in open court to the judge that I knew she had been seeing two men for a year before the divorce and that I had made up the tax divorce to cheat her out of her share of my money. She seemed to forget that her parents and our children were in the courtroom when she made these statements. When the judge ruled against her, he lectured her about cheating and blaming others for her own problems. After the hearing, my parents gave her a scandal about her cheating with two men while we were married. Apparently, she told them that I left her for another woman and tried to cheat her out of her business. It ended with her mom punching Libby in the face. Libby turned to Jennifer and Derek, who turned away from their mother. Neither of them wanted anything to do with her after the hearing.